All right, we are starting on page 172. This is activity three. We're gonna complete activity three, four, and five. I'm going through some problems, not all the problems, and then uh, we'll be finishing up with the assignment schedules for uh, this lesson. Okay, so starting out, um, let's read the context here in this box. This is uh, Daisy, I'll just say Daisy. Daisy attends college in another state. During summer break, she drives home from college to visit her family and friends. Number one, uh, Daisy decides to keep track of time it takes her to drive home from school, and she records her distance after various number of hours. Her data is on this table. Um, a, does the table represent a proportional relationship? So uh, how can we determine if um, a table is proportional? Um, so first of all, it is, I'll, I'll give you the answer here. So we're gonna say yes, um, it is proportional. But how can we determine that? <coughs> okay. Um, so proportional, when we talk about proportional, there's two things you want to look at. At least on a graph, it is um, a straight line and it goes through the origin. Um, we can look at, at the ratio here. Um, let's let's look at, at some of these ratios. I'm going to look at this one right here. You, although I'm circling or highlighting it, you can circle it. Um, that ratio is... In terms of speed, this is 180 miles per every three hours. So let's write that up. So this is 180 over three. Write that as a fraction. Uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, so this should be equal to the next one. She's going uh, at a consistent rate. 150 miles in two and a half hours. Let's continue this. Or that should be equal to 120 miles every two hours. And then finally, 90, out, 90 miles in an hour and a half, 1.5. Okay, now these all simplify to equal the same thing. Uh, we'll get to that in the other problems, but um, the reason that this is proportional is, right, it should go through the origin if graphed. So what this means is Deza um, would, <clears throat> um, would travel, let's say, travel zero miles um, in zero hours, right? This would be her barely even starting the car, right? So if we start at zero, zero, um, I'll put that here, right? That means it is proportional and that all these ratios should be equal. Let's get to part B though, where it says write a ratio uh, for the distance. You can use any one of these rows. I'll use the last one though, which is, uh, we can write the ratio of 180 over three. A couple of different ways that we can represent this, right? We can write it as a fraction. We can write it using a colon, All right, We did this yesterday, 180 colon three, or we could say 180 and then the word two, three. <clears throat> All right, now C. Um, it says write the unit rate for distance per one hour. So we know that she's going 180 per one, or sorry, per three hours, but a unit rate. Unit rate is off to the right here. Um, it's a comparison of two quantities in which the numerator or denominator has a value of one unit. Um, we're going to simplify this where we take 180 divided by three. <clears throat> I mean, you could divide both these by three. Um, if you're not sure what 180 divided by 3 is, maybe do 18, right? What's 18 divided by 3? That's 6. Um, so add the 0 there. It is 60. Now 60, since the numerator was miles and the denominator was hours, this is 60 miles per hour. Or you could see it also as MPH. Um, but we'll also write this as a fraction here. I'll put 60 miles. I'll abbreviate miles there as MI over one hour, abbreviate that as HR. <clears throat> okay, so keep in mind, right, Deza traveled 60 miles per hour, that's pretty fast, that's probably like going on the freeway, that's not really going on the street along Gibson, that's more of like maybe 30 miles an hour, if that, <clears throat> and even slower in a school zone. 
Okay, we're going to compare this with, um, I believe, one of her classmates on the next page, page 173. This is one of Deza's um, high school classmates, Tamar, attends college with Deza. He also drives home from uh, during the, the summer break and takes a different route. Now, for, for Tamar, it's not represented as a table, and, and that's part of our learning goal is that we're comparing different representations. <clears throat> so, two. Um, analyze the graph of his trip. Does the graph represent a proportional relationship? Is it a straight line? So first of all, we're going to say yes. Um, it is proportional. And then a brief reason why. Um, the reason is because it is a straight line through the coordinate, well, the origin, but through 0, 0. <clears throat> okay, All right, so it goes through the origin. So we know it's proportional, meaning that you can multiply any number. Um, let's say like one, you can multiply that by a number and you'll be able to find what is the distance that Tamar traveled, right? If you, if you multiply that same thing, let's say by two, or you can figure out how far uh, they traveled there. I'm gonna erase this though. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll get to this soon. <clears throat> Who drives faster, Deza or Tamar? Now, this comes from our understanding of um, using the, the graph itself. I want you to find a good point. Now, a good point, what I mean, is a point on the line that goes through the corners of the square of the grid. So some good points here. This is a good point. I mean, you could use zero, zero, but that doesn't help us. Um, let's say this, I think that's a good point there. Um, right here, we're gonna use, you know, let's use that that third one here. Um, this is, I'll connect here and I'll connect here. <clears throat> so what does this represent? This is saying that Tamar drove for three hours. So that's a long time. And, right, he drove, it's between 140 and 160. This is 150. So let's represent that as a ratio, in this case, a fraction as well. Um, we'll put 150 over 3. 150 divided by 3 is 50 miles per hour. So 50, I'll put MPH for miles per hour. <clears throat> so who is driving faster? Let's answer that here. Right, Tamar is driving 50 miles an hour, whereas Days is driving 60 miles per hour. So 60 is more than 50. So we're going to say that Deza drove faster at 60 MPH miles per hour. Typically we represent that as a fraction, but I'll, we'll just put MPH. Okay. Um, now we're introducing into this context, this story, a third friend. It says, a third friend, uh, Alicia, offers to drive Deza and Tamar home for spring break so that they can share the cost of gas money. Um, when asked how fast she drives, Alicia reported the distance traveled Y. So this is uh, Y, which is in terms of miles, and X, which is time in terms of hours. And then we have this equation here. Okay. Now, with a, a table, right, you, you look at the, the each row and you divide it. With a, a, a graph, you, you find a good point and you find out how high it is and how wide it is. For an equation, it's actually, the, I would think, the easiest one here. Um, you just find the, the constant proportionality, which is just its value. Anyways, so let's get to number three. Does Alicia's equation represent a proportional relationship? So this is yes. Um, because the equation is of the form. Um, so we'll say equation is of the form. I wrote this on, on, on equations for proportionality. Y equal to KX. Right? That's what it represents to be proportional. We just have Y equal to, there's some type of number right before X. Now, for this, um, the constant proportionality for, for Alicia, um, we could put constant proportionality, but I'm just going to put K. K is equal to 57. <coughs> um, since there are no added values, like I'll give you an example of something that isn't proportional. 
if you had y equal to 57x plus 5, that plus 5 is a reason that it will be not proportional. I'll put prop. Just, just a side example there. Um, but let, let's look at, um, so this t tells us that she's going 57 miles per hour. So for four, compare the representations of the three friends who drives the fastest. So Deza is still fastest. Deza is fastest. All right. <clears throat> but for this, um, let's go ahead and rank them. So for B, rank the friends in order from slowest to fastest. So uh, Alicia's 57 miles an hour. Um, Deza is 60 miles an hour. And Tamar is 50 miles an hour. So, so we're going to say Tamar. And then in parentheses, I'll write 50, comma. Then the next one is Alicia. That is 57. And then uh, it is Deza, or Deza, at 60 miles an hour. Okay. But, right, overall, not too bad. Like, with the equation, we just see what that constant proportionality is. Okay. Let's go into activity four, which we're going to skip a little bit. Okay. We're going to skip number one, but so that we get the context here, it says, so that uh, title, comparing depth of color. In this act activity, we'll compare part to part ratios. We've been comparing part to whole ratios, like what's it out of. Um, now for this, it looks like they're molding clay. Um, we're not going to do this, but you, you, would, you would mold clay by using some type of, some amount of flour and water. And that would either give you something that's more kind of, um, like maybe watered down or more sturdy, depending on, on your ratio there. But we're actually going to go to the next context. Uh, with uh, this art class. It says the art professor would like all the projects to include the same shade of orange paints. The students create orange paint by mixing, right? You mix it by using two other colors. That is red and yellow. So <coughs> um, we're going to be using these different representations. First one, um, this first group, Avi, is using an equation. Xander is using a table, and Paul is using um, a line, a graph. So we'll be going back and forth here, but let's start with um, Avi, so Avi's group. Uh, so the number two says, explain how you know that each group's proposal represents a proportional relationship. So for Avi's group here, right, it is an equation of the form y equal to kx, but we have y equal to four-fifths x. Okay. Where we have, let's highlight here, where X is the amount of red paint, and we'll put this in blue, Y is the amount of yellow paint. Okay, so uh, obvious group is yes, All right, similar because it's um, of the form, whoops, this should be a T, of the form Y equal to KX. All right, <clears throat> now, since this fraction is, um, um, well, first of all, since the, the constant proportionality is a fraction, it's four fifths. Now, what part of it is, is red? What part of it is, is, um, is yellow? So with this, um, the, the numerator here, the K value, typically the K value is always Y divided by X. So since Y is yellow, and, and X is, is red, we know that the numerator here, four, is gonna represent yellow. So we're gonna put that this is, right, four, I'll write four fifths over here. So this is four parts, four parts yellow. Now, we don't know what it is in terms of, maybe it's four cups, maybe it's four ounces. We just, we're just gonna say parts. Um, and the denominator is five, so that's five parts red. <clears throat> okay, so let's keep that in mind. Let's look at Xander's group. Um, so Xander's group, we can use any one of these these uh, rows here. Let's use, we have a lot of decimals. I'm gonna use this one here. Now keep in mind, we started with yellow over, over red. So I'm gonna use two over eight instead of eight over two. 
So this is also a proportional relationship, um, but it would be four, oh sorry, not four, two over eight. So this would be two parts, we said that this is two parts yellow, and in this case, eight parts red. But you know what, that's a fraction that can be simplified um, right, two can divide both of them, so two divided by two and eight divided by two, this would be one fourth. So we'll say one yellow, so we could say like one, um, one gallon uh, of yellow paint over four gallons of red paint. All right, anyways, so we keep that in mind. <clears throat> we'll, we'll compare that fraction later. And then let's go to the last one here, which is Paul's group, um, looking at at uh, um, the graph. So we're gonna look at what's a good point to use. This right here actually isn't a good point. It's not quite on the corner there. Um, let's see, what else could we use? I think this point right here. That's a good point on the corner of the graph. Um, let's go ahead and draw the line from the right y-axis to that point and the x-axis to this point. So how many parts yellow, how many parts red? We have the y-axis here. So our value is going to be, it's gonna start with six, and that's gonna be over, right, the x value, which is 10. So six over 10, and we can simplify that as well. All right, so this is six tenths. We can divide both of these. A lot of these are, we're just dividing by two, I guess this one as well. This would be three, over five, so three parts yellow and five parts red. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna put this in terms of, uh, for number three, we're gonna rate the group's proposal from lightest to, um, so lightest shade of orange to the deepest or darkest shade of orange. Um, the way that this starts, so let's actually write these fractions. So we have this one, this one and this one, right? Yesterday we talked about how to compare fractions, right? See which one is, which fraction is equal, bigger, so greater than or less than. Um, for this, the, the, the one that is the lightest will be, <coughs> so lightest orange to darkest to deepest orange. Mm. So yellow paint to red paint. All right, so we're looking at which one is like the um, least amount of yellow compared to red. Um, for, so for the first one, it'll be Avi. Right, Avi has a lot of yellow here, as we can tell with that four parts yellow. So we're gonna say Avi. I'll put four yellow to, I'll put colon to five red. Um, next one would be is Paul. So that is three parts yellow to five parts red. Right, so that's that's a good comparison there because um, let's say the denominator of this would be would actually be both these added. Right, four plus five is nine and three plus five is eight. Right, so uh, four eighths or four ninths over, over three eighths. You can make a comparison there using fractions. And the last one is going to be Xander. <coughs> and that was a lot more red compared to yellow. It is one part yellow compared to four parts red. All right, so that's gonna be lightest to darkest. And let's get to this last part. We're gonna represent an equation here. Um, it says write an equation where X is the amount of red paint. Yep, we did that. Y is the yellow paint. Um, we we want to create some type of orange that is between the two deepest shades. So what do you mean by this? Um, two deepest shades we have for Xander was the, the darkest one. That is one fourth. And Paul, which is uh, the middle one, which is three fifths. We got to find a fraction that's in between both of these. So it's kind of hard to tell at least right now. So what I recommend you do, let's use what we are understanding yesterday. Let's multiply and create a common denominator. 
And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to multiply the first fraction by 5 and second fraction by 4. And we can get, uh, make a comparison using these now two fractions. The first one here is going to be um, 5 twentieths. And the second one is, it's actually going to be smaller, but this will be 12 twentieths. All right. So what's the number between 5 over 20 and, and 12 over 20? Or what's between 5 and 12? Um, this is, <coughs> let's say 10, 10 twentieths. Um, now 10 twentieths, I can simplify. That can be, right, that can equal 1 half. So the equation that we can write a sample um, example here would be y equal to, let's say, 1 half, 10 over 20, x. Right, so we can compare fractions here, but we can also determine right, uh, what is in between two fractions. Anyways, uh, we'll get to talk the talk later, but I'd like for you to move on to the assignment. Go and rip out page one, oh, 177. Um, we're going to do all of the front side. All the front side is actually one problem. And the back side, we are completing both parts to number two. So number two A and number two B. So everything on number one, everything on number two. All right.